preoccupation I've had for 40 years is to identify the human with the universe. I'm talking about the nature of, of creativity, the nature of how truth is revealed, and that was a lot of, sounds corny, but that's really what we were talking about. Um, mathematics is all around us. It is the framework, it is the invisible skeleton upon which the flesh of the world is hung. As corny as it sounds, the, name, the, the topic was the nature of the true and the real and our access to it. Uh, and these two very radically different ways of getting to truth through the arts and through science. And what I don't want you to do is to know where the Hubble is, or where Stephen is, and it's, it's a marriage of the three. Artist Steve Carpenter and astrophysicist Adam Frank have combined their unique gifts to create unparalleled works of art in their new series, Cosmo Dialogos. The collaboration melds Hubble telescope imagery, Adam's mathematical formulas, and Steve's paintings onto canvas through the use of advanced digital techniques. Steve then creates his interpretation of the human element within the universe through the application of texture and paint. What emerges is a highly collaborative form of art. We now join astrophysicist Adam Frank with highlights from his presentation, Cosmo Dialogos, the harmony of the relative and absolute. So what I will try and do briefly is just tell you actually, well, a little bit about the, what Steve and I went through or how we got here, um, but also some of the science behind it, because that's really, I think, the interesting thing uh, that is happening here. And what's interesting is the narrative of how this all works. So Steve and I, you know, we started talking when I was um, starting my first book about science and religion. Uh, and so, you know, we had these conversations, of, you know, we keep meeting in the coffee shop and talking about the nature of, of creativity, the nature of how truth is revealed. And that was a lot of, it sounds corny, but that's really what we were talking about was, you know, what is it that happens in science? What is it that happens in, uh, in, in art that allows us to have this sense that some aspect of the world, some, some, um, uh, some essential character of the world <coughs> comes through and we feel like we've engaged with truth. So uh, again, so Steve and I met through the Zen Center. We're both uh, uh, Buddhists and that's where the conversation started. And so, as I said, during the, this period from 2005 to 2007, the conversation's gone on. But we just spent a lot of time <laughs> talking. And it was hours and hours of conversation. I always came out of it feeling like, you know, the top of my head had been opened up. That suddenly there was all these ideas. And as corny as it sounds, the, na the, the topic was the nature of the true and the real and our access to it. Uh, and these two very radically different ways of getting to truth, uh, through the arts and through science. So what's interesting, I think, we're really fascinating about this for me, and what's the, the narrative that's important here is the role of laser, of, the, you know, of, the, of, of what they bring to the table, that somehow this attempt to authentically merge the scientific endeavor and the artistic endeavor requires this intermediary step, which is you know, what laser does, which is both directly aesthetics and technology, the ability to capture these digital images manipulate them at a very, very um, uh, a fine-grained level and then get them onto the canvas. Is the idea what matters in science is not, you know, what the equation says or how it, um, uh, you know, uh, how its veracity with the data, I mean, that's, that is what science is about, but what matters for us if we're thinking about how science and culture and the human experience um, merge together is our response to the truths. Um, so it's the image, it's the ideas behind the image that we respond to, that call us to something greater than ourselves. And, and that is really where Steve needs to begin as an artist. Not as an end point, but as a beginning point. Um, mathematics is all around us. It is the framework, it is the invisible skeleton upon which the flesh of the world is hung. 
Uh, and you know, the way I describe as a scientist these clouds is through the language of mathematics. And what you see is the language of mathematics that I use. All of these equations that are on here are equations that I would use to describe <coughs> a cloud sitting in space that has pressure and density and gravity all acting on it, etc. Right? That mathematics is a poetic language. That it's like poetry in the sense that you have very few terms and yet they can be infinitely unpacked. So in many ways, for me, there's a, there's a beauty to me in these that is like calligraphy, right? Just the, the, the way these things lay on a page, to me, is quite lovely. Uh, and I think that's one of the things that you know, Steve is trying to do in getting these on the page. So really, I think what's happening here, and what will be so fascinating to watch, as because really, the work is Steve's, right? Steve's got the hard job here, is that, and you see this in this progression of trying to figure out, it's a work in progress, how to do this, right? And what I love about this one is the sense Right? So this is, you know, you've seen, there it is, right? This is a, a spire of gas that will evaporate and sometime there are stars being born in there. And now what he's done is he's found the human in it. He's found, you know, the, the way in which a human form can emerge out of this. And so what's happening, we're seeing this, you know, what Carl Sagan always said, stardust looking at stardust. You know, to me, that says it far more profoundly and more eloquently and more deeply than stardust looking at stardust. What does that mean? I don't know. But that tells me, that shows me in ways I've never imagined before. So I want to leave you with um, the, the title that is often, the way it's often called is the uh, harmony of the relative and the absolute. The relative being our lives, our time-bound lives, and the absolute being that sense of, you know, of the absolute, of the timeless and the eternal. Ordinary life fits the absolute as a box and its lid. The absolute works together with the relative like two arrows meeting in the air.